Welcome to the inaugural episode of Cama Trip Reports. In the first episode, we will discuss what went into the decision to take a Fujifilm XE3 on a family vacation to Universal Orlando. Many factors play into balancing family enjoyment while documenting the vacation for the purpose of remembering the wonderful shared moments. If this sounds like your life, follow the planning, preparation, photography, and evaluation of the experience and results. All the gear used in this camera trip report was purchased by your humble reporter, and there was no sponsorship of any sort. What follows is a real life experience. One of the questions that is frequently seen on forums goes something like this. I will be traveling to Europe, South America, the Grand Canyon, Disney World, etc. I will be taking pictures of family, architecture, and doing some street photography. What camera and lenses should I take? Is there a way that one can methodically plan and prepare for the joyful experience and precious captured memories? I think so. I would like to share my experience and hopefully you can benefit. So why is this question important? The answer is rather simple. You want to be happy and to share that happiness with others now and in the future. In fact, you may be planning to create a photographic legacy, a legacy for you and for others. What follows in this camera trip report is a process that may well increase your joy and satisfaction when you take your camera with you on your travels. The travel could be anything. The travel could be to a local park, a nearby restaurant, a family event, or a faraway land for an extended period. What each episode will outline are the photographic goals, planning, preparation, the photography experience, impact of the photography on the trip, the results, an evaluation of the results, and finally, what was learned in applying the learnings to future trips. The process has been used for years to great effect in business and industry to improve products and processes. It is usually known as Six Sigma or Plan, Do, Check, Act. Here's a summary of the process that will be illustrated in each episode of Camera Trip Reports. One, we will talk about the goals for the trip. We will also talk about the preparation for the trip. There will be discussion about constraints. Alternatives considered will be presented. The reasons for selecting a particular alternative will be given. Two, you will see example pictures illustrating what went well and what did not go well. We will talk about the lessons learned on the trip. The lessons will be derived from comparing the results against the goals. Lastly, we will determine what lessons to apply to future trips and events. The transportation of your gear can present a substantial constraint. For our trip to Orlando, Florida, we will be flying. Checked baggage and high value photographic equipment do not often mix well. One learning from prior trips is that photographic gear should fit or be in the carry-on luggage. One is limited to one carry-on and one personal item. Also learned is that the carry-on may need to be stored under the seat in front of you. These facts and possibilities definitely limits the amount of camera gear one can safely take when flying. So what to do? For the Universal Orlando trip, I wanted to be able to place the camera bag inside a Swiss gear backpack. Past experience indicated the backpack can qualify as a personal item. Placing the camera bag inside the backpack disguises the fact that you're carrying camera gear and makes you a lesser target. The Swiss gear backpack fits underneath an airline seat in case the overhead bins are full. Also, in order to protect the gear, we purchased an early boarding to help ensure that overhead bin space would be available. One key goal to minimize camera and lens size and weight. Keeping to one camera body and ideally one lens will enable all photo gear to fit inside the camera bag that can fit inside the main compartment of the Swiss gear camera backpack. Additionally, we would be in Universal Orlando parks for up to 10 hours a day. Planning to experience the rides in Universal Orlando means checking the camera bag in a ride locker smaller is better. The family also does not expect the Universal Orlando trip to be a photo expedition. Less gear is better in satisfying family member expectations. Taking one camera body and one lens is the goal. 
can it be done? Shown here is the preferred carry solution, a Think Tank Mirrorless Mover 10. Now, let us talk about what types of subjects are expected to be photographed. Being completely honest, we have been to Universal Orlando previously and knew what to expect. For places not previously visited, internet research is a prerequisite. Where there will be some ride action, the action can be anticipated and most family pictures will be posed. Anticipating no great demands will be placed on autofocus. I can rule out taking a Nikon D5. We will want to take pictures inside Hogwarts and Ollivanders. Both are very, very dim. Most of the family pictures will be full body or group pictures. A moderately wide angle lens will be needed. The greatest challenge will be taking pictures in very dark locations. Plus, strongly prefer not to use flash for aesthetic reasons. The indoor pictures of family will mostly be full body or upper torso, anticipating some moderate movement in Ollivanders. Planning on taking pictures in the attractions inside of Hogwarts also. Outdoors, the Wizarding World presents a moderate challenge. There's usually plenty of light. Desire to take buildings, pictures of buildings, signs, and window displays. The dragon at Gringotts offers a wonderful opportunity to capture a sequence of dragons or a dragon breathing fire. The camera needs to capture a sequence of pictures over about three seconds and at a minimum of three frames per second. Doing the math, the requirement for buffer of about 10 images before slowing down. The family loves the restaurants at Universal Orlando. We have a special fondness for Sal's Deli. Good food photography requires reasonably wide depth of field to make the pictures attractive. Working against the wide depth of field is most restaurants are dimly lit. Sal's is not an exception to the dimly lit rule. After all, it is romantic to be dimly lit. A camera body with a stabilized sensor or stabilized lens would help capture the memories of the meals we enjoyed. The sushi at Cowfish is also very photogenic and actually artistically presented and worthy of a good image. Let us start by looking at a camera and lens combinations that will satisfy the requirements. First up is the Sony a6300 and the Sony 16-70 f4 zoom lens. First, the one camera body and one lens solution fits inside the preferred camera bag the ThinkTech Mirrorless Mover 10. The Sony a6300 provides a very good low light image and, in, and the, in the expected low light environments. The Sony 16-70 f4 zoom lens provides good but not outstanding stabilization. As an added bonus, the AF performance of the a6300 exceeds the requirements. So far, so good. The a6300 provides acceptable battery life but I predict one to two batteries will be needed each day. This will create a recharging challenge at the end of the day. The ergonomics of the A6300 are okay and won't present any obstacles in the Universal Orlando's park environment as the shooting is relatively slow and considered. This is a very good candidate combination. Another range finder-like alternative, the Fujifilm XE3 and Fujifilm 18-55 f2.8 to 4 zoom lens. The body and lens combination also fit inside the preferred camera bag. The XE3 low light capability is in the same class as the Sony a6300, but likely falling just a little short of the a6300's performance. The Fujifilm 18 to 55 f2.8 to 4 zoom lens is known for its optical quality and a three to four stop stabilization capability. Plus, the lens at the wide end is brighter than the Sony 16-70. to The AF performance of this combination is very good, though not as good as the A6300. Since we anticipate only minor action, this does not disqualify the XE3 at all. The battery life is similar to the A6300, so we have a draw. Where the XE3 pulls ahead, however, is in ergonomics. In this case, the AF joystick. They will help in quickly placing focus on impatient family members. Another big plus for our family is the out-of-camera JPEG images.
The family really likes to see the pictures at the end of the day, and the, foodie, food, the Fuji JPEGs are a real family pleaser. The final candidate combination is the Sony Full Frame A7R 3 and Sony 24-70 F4 zoom lens. The only drawback to this camera and lens combination is that it is, that it is noticeably heavier than the A6300 or the Fujifilm XE3 alternatives. The real plus is the excellent low light image quality. The low light image quality while maintaining an acceptable shutter speed is the outstanding feature of this combination and making it a real contender, especially what we expect will happen in Ollivanders, which is very, very dim with some action. Lens and body stabilization, stabilization is also very acceptable. The Sony a7R 3 possesses excellent AF performance, exceeding, handily exceeding the need. Battery performance means only a fraction of one battery per day, simplifying the recharging at the end of the day. The ergonomics are the best of the three alternatives. This camera and lens combination will make it a hard decision and the only real drawback being weight and size. In the end, the Fujifilm XE3 and Fujifilm 18-55 f2.8-4 body and lens combination was chosen. The key advantages were weight and size. The quality of the JPEGs for family viewing each night and the AF joystick. Working against the Fujifilm combo was my relative inexperience with the camera and lens. What to do to offset that risk? The preferred carry solution, as mentioned previously, is the Think Tank Mirrorless Mover 10. The Mover 10 easily held the XE3 with the attached 18-55 zoom lens, and it, as you can see, the XE3 was outfitted with the, oper, the, excuse me, the optional grip for added stability and comfort. The Mover 10 also carried one spare battery and spare SD card. In all, a small, light, all-day carry solution. The mirrorless Mover 10 was equipped with its rain jacket as Florida weather includes times of rain during the day. I have significant experience with the A6300 in lens, very little experience with the Fuji film combination. Desiring to take the Fuji to Universal Orlando, testing of the camera body and lens was needed. One needs to know the limitations and capabilities. Plus, one must know how to operate the camera and lens competently. To accomplish these ends, the camera and lens were tested at all apertures and key focal lengths on near field and far field subjects. No defects or surprises were found. The Fujifilm cleared the first hurdle. The XE3 and kit lens were next taken on a low light outing to determine its abilities in my hands. Low light image quality and image stabilization proved more than adequate, at least I thought. Also, I learned to operate the camera in an environment that mimicked the worst to be encountered at Universal Orlando. The camera, lens, and the photographer were ready. This cannot be overemphasized. The trip and its memories would be irreplaceable. The image quality expect or the image quality obtained from the XE3 and the 1855 zoom lens exceeded my expectations. The color, the contrast, and especially the detail were just what makes memories come alive. Look at the hair, the necklace, the fabric detail. Detail. The colors are very lifelike and the scene is just so alive. The skin tones and white balance were spot on. The camera and operator were quick enough to capture a candid moment. The result is just what was hoped for. Our wish came true. We knew that Ollivanders recreates the scene where the wand chooses the wizard. We hoped our grandson would be chosen and he was. Ollivanders is very dark, and this photo was taken at ISO 12,800 at a shutter speed lower than I wanted to freeze action. I was hesitant to move the ISO up to 25,600. Timing here turned out to be everything. Pressing the shutter button during a lull in subject moment. While the image is not perfect, it was satisfactory. You can see that there is a significant amount of noise. However, there was adequate detail and the color held up and lens stabilization helped with the 1 12th second shutter speed. During the entire trip, this was the only time 
that I thought that the A7R3 would have created a more pleasing image. I will need to dwell on this learning for the next trip containing some action and very low light. The end image taken at Gringotts turned out much better than expected. Color, noise, contrast, and detail worked out very well. The image obtained matched the scene as observed rather well. Note the moving image in the Daily Prophet is cleared and not a blurred mess. The Fujifilm X-E3 captured the dragon breathing fire perfectly. Obtaining a sequence took some practice and it was necessary to learn the signs indicating when dry and dragon fire was imminent. With plenty of light, the color is spot on and the detail outstanding. I never ran out of buffer for the three sequences of pictures taken as the dragon breathes fire for only several seconds. We stayed at the Portofino Bay Hotel and this picture is from the morning of our first full day at the resorted park. I really love the colorful buildings and boats, the dramatic sky and the bright sunshine. This picture exemplifies what the Fujifilm X-E3 can do. The only anomaly is the blurring of building detail on the far left side of the image. I have not been able to determine what happened. Focus was on the blue boat with the aperture set at 5.6. Technically, everything should be in sharp focus. Far field testing prior to the trip never showed this behavior. It demonstrates that in spite of preparation, surprises will happen. Still, not a bad picture and most will not notice the defect in image quality. Even the salads at Cowfish are colorful and artistically arranged. The picture works, color and detail is very good, but notice how quickly focus falls off behind the greens. Stabilization was very important here as the shutter speed was low. In short, the Fujifilm X-E3 ex fulfilled expectations. It provided very pleasing out-of-camera JPEG images the family enjoyed immediately, and using Iridian X-Transformer and Lightroom Classic, uh, excellent raw conversions. The size and weight of the camera body and lens proved ideal as I was not fatigued from carrying and using the combination after eight to 10 hours in the parks. The low light capability coupled with lens stabilization was at the boundary. Ideally, I ideally wanted a shutter speed minimum of a 1 30th of a second in dark environments with people motion. The best balance I was able to achieve was ISO 12800 with 1 12th of a second shutter speed, which was a bit low. I, if I had to make the decision again, I would strongly consider taking a Sony a7 III for its low light capability along with the 24 to 105 zoom lens and bear the additional weight. When minimizing gear, these are hard decisions to make. All in all, the Fujifilm X-E3 and kit lens exceeded my expectations and I would not be without it. In fact, I liked the results so much that I acquired an X-T2. Lessons learned for similar future trips. Was greatly impressed with the image quality. Size and weight were ideal for long outings. And as I mentioned earlier, so impressed with the lens quality that I purchased a 10 to 24 F4 stabilized lens and a Fujifilm 18 to 135 stabilized lens. We also took this to Colonial Williamsburg, which will be uh, a future episode of Camera Trip Reports. So let's take a look at a very colorful cowfish roll. Again, notice here that the depth of field was just about what was needed. However, if you look closely, you will see some noise. However, the picture was more than acceptable. Okay, now inside the lobby of Gringotts, this turned out very, very well. In fact, I, I was very pleased with the color rendition, the noise, the retention of detail, and all a superb shot. And oh yes, what could be uh, a Universal Orlando trip would not be complete without visiting lard lads. So how can one resist outdoors, the color, the detail, the contrast of the Fuji X-E3 along with the 18 to 55 kit lens was spot on. Okay, this was one where I really had to prepare. I had to wait. I manually focused on the dragon's jaw as there was a risk using autofocus would change focus to the fireball. 
This particular shot is the second shot of a continuous burst. There are clues heralding a fireball, and at times there is no ignition due to a greater than acceptable wind speed. And oh yes, you can feel the heat. It is extremely dark inside of Hogwarts. This is taken at 1 8th of a second, F5.6, again at ISO 12800. Again, notice the retention of detail. There is low noise in this particular shot, and the color is spot on. Inside Hogshead, 1 8th of a second, F7.1, ISO 12800 makes a return. One of the pictures that I wanted for its memory is inside Dumbledore's office. This is really difficult to catch, and so you do have to make sure that your camera gear is top notch and up to the tasks. So this is one eighth of a second at F3.2. Had to open up the aperture again at ISO 12800. These shots are, are really here to show you what can be accomplished with the Fujifilm XC3 and the kit lens. Notice the detail of the dragon and also of the books sitting on Dumbledore's deck. Outside at Zonko's in Hogsmeade. Love this particular one for the color and also for the detail in the wood. I hope you have taken away something of value and I wish you many happy, happy camera trips.